I'm Adam Willems, lead reporter at The Financial Revolutionist. I'm Karina Stukan, VP of Product at Stella Elements, part of the Endbox Group. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, yeah, I'd love to hear more about Stellar Elements and how it sort of falls under the Amdocs umbrella. Right, so Stellar Elements is kind of the experience arm of Amdocs. So what we focus on is the digital experience. We work with a lot of banks around the globe. I'm based in APAC, uh, but work closely with my colleagues in the US. And obviously through Amdocs, we have also that, that global reach. Amdocs mm -hmm. is in 90 countries. Um, so yeah, definitely um, get a lot of exposure to banks all around the world through that as well. Um, so what we focus on is kind of the understanding customer needs. So we work, you know, we're very excited about technology, but what we do as a very first step is do the research in the market about what customers need from their banks uh, and then design the ideal experience and then recommend the right like strategy, roadmap and technology stack to actually build these experiences. Okay, understood. How much do those experiences actually differ from bank or region? Um, so I think there are a lot of global trends we're seeing, like everyone at the moment is obviously talking about Gen AI is one mm -hmm. of the very hot topics. Personalization is something we've come across uh, independent of the region. But then obviously different countries are at different stages of adopting certain technologies and then there are regulatory differences as well. So I think the devil is then in the detail of mm -hmm. like how you actually implement and execute and build your roadmap around it. Okay, absolutely. and. Um trends, hype, right. different things like that. <laughs> Some, uh, you know, a company like Amdocs has been around for a long time and yeah. has certainly uh, operated through a number of zeitgeisty waves. So I'm curious, sort of from your perspective, how much you have to keep a pulse on those sort of different up and coming technologies and invest in them versus see where they head and then react from there. Right. So that's a great question. I think we're always trying to strike a balance. We're obviously there to help our banking customers innovate and mm -hmm. really push the boundaries um, and also looking at what the customers actually need. So independent of technology trends, what is it actually that the customer wants from their bank? So one right. of the really interesting trends I found is more and more customers want their bank to be like their good friend that they can turn to for honest advice. Hmm. Now, obviously, that's a very scary topic for financial service institutions to give like digital financial advice, right? right? We all know the constraints around it. So, but we're definitely trying to push the boundaries of this is where we see the vision, right? This is where, for example, you could use Gen AI in a very useful way hmm. to help recommend or advise products, uh, the right financial products and services to your customers or build financial literacy. Um, so there are a lot of really useful use cases that we see, but then we're also pragmatic and go, okay, now how can we maybe approach it in a staged approach where we can test it, for example, internally in the bank first, uh, expose these types of things to relationship managers in the bank, sure. right? Then they can train it, they can get comfortable. Mm -hmm. So we definitely don't go, you know, you have to launch this Gen AI powered banking experience tomorrow. That's mm -hmm. um, definitely not feasible in, in many different ways, but we're trying to stay true to the vision of the customer needs. Totally, and with that in mind, how often do you get traditional banks coming to you saying, we want to move into Gen AI, but they're still operating on, you know, 40 year old mainframe technology. How do you, how do you, how do you respond to that and, and get them incrementally to sort of the shiny object that they want? In yeah. The road? So we, I think we operate in, in both worlds again. Sure. It's always that balanced approach of we help them with, I mean, you're familiar with Amdoc, so we do whole banking transformations from the cloud migration through to the you know, new digital experiences that kind of uh, cover the basic functionality mm -hmm. that someone expects in the bank. But then we also start introducing proof of concept. So we're investing a lot internally, actually, at Amdocs building what we call accelerators. Okay. So they're kind of modules, for example, using Gen AI um, and, and also traditional AI modules, uh, maybe some experiences that you can launch in a proof of concept, because that's the key really to show in a sandbox environment as a very first step, this is actually working. Right. Test it inside the bank, maybe do some beta groups, again, the stage rollout, and then over time you can actually link it into your main experience. Okay, yeah, that makes, that makes a lot of sense. You mentioned that you operate primarily in APAC and also in the US. At the same time, Amdocs traditionally operates in the telco space. Yes. How much sort of knowledge transfer happens between the banking and financial part of Amdocs versus sort of these other industries that it's traditionally operated in? 
There's actually more than you'd think. Okay. Um, so a lot of our telco work at Amdocs has already actually covered some sort of financial services, technologies like payments, mobile wallets, sure. right? Like those have all been around in the telco space. Mm -hmm. We've done that for a very long time. Mm -hmm. A lot of these solutions are very applicable to financial services. And then in terms of insights that we're getting, I mean, any large corporation is trying to get more data about their customers, create a more personalized experience, right? It's the same in the telco space. And I've done a bit of work in that industry as well, as well as in the financial services. Um, so we're creating a lot of modules or technology solutions and accelerators that I've mentioned that, you know, we're testing it and we're adjusting it to different industries, but right. the core concepts are very reusable in my opinion. Sure, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. A place like Money 2020 has a lot of up and coming fintechs that I imagine you would want to potentially partner with down the road. Um, I'm wondering what sort of particular use cases those kinds of fintechs could be helpful um, for sort of Amdocs um, and what the conversations have been like for you on the ground here as well. Yeah, so I think there are a lot of um, partnerships that a lot of our banking customers are exploring these days. Sure. A really popular example has been um, accounting tools or like sure. you know, fintechs that provide some sort of accounting services or cash flow forecasts, integrating those into the banking or partnering up with banks to provide like a holistic experience, for example, for small business owners. Yeah. Um, that has been quite valuable. So I think um, banks are definitely... Uh, expanding their reach, also want to expand their services that they offer to a bank, right? Mm -hmm. Again, if we take a small business owner as an example, um, if they start up a business, yes, they need a bank account, but they might also need, you know, I don't know, the office suite and uh, maybe, I don't know, mobile phones and, and plans for the employees. So they need this range of services. So we've actually created some products that help with, you know, bundling these different services and partners and servicing them up for the banking customers as yeah. well, which I think is super interesting because that's how you provide additional value uh, all through like this one channel and you can make create you know a better customer experience mm -hmm. and ultimately retain the customers a lot better as well yeah that makes a lot of sense i have two questions left yes one is what do you see for amdocs in the coming year i think there's again we talked about gen ai it's obviously a huge topic um right but there are some really interesting applications of it for the actual end customer experience okay um, so there's definitely going to be a lot of continuous work. We're having, we're creating some first uh, projects with a couple of banks around the world as well in the space. So those ones I'm particularly excited about, uh, but also in the SMB space, uh, in the retail space, just general personalization, I think is, is really the key. So um, we're really excited to bring kind of all of these different areas together into like a holistic experience. And we call it the uh, we actually call it the you first mindset. So, okay. you know, we, um, that's a topic I, uh, I failed to mention earlier. We look at the customer and their holistic needs uh, first and foremost. Sure. Um, so rather than having these siloed experiences, one for business banking, one for retail, then maybe you have your family banking accounts. We actually integrate all of these into a holistic experience. And that's, that's kind of the core vision yeah. that we're really trying to push ahead with and that I'm really excited about. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. My last question is whether there are any questions I haven't asked that you feel like I should have. I guess um, maybe one area I wanted to touch on is the challenges. Yeah, yeah. the challenges that like, obviously we're all getting excited about these amazing visions of these custom experiences. Um, and I think really investing in like proof of concepts and having that experimentation mindset is something that I think is really valuable. So the banks that have invested in proof of concepts using these new technologies in the sandbox, while they're also going on the major uh, migrations, and obviously they take, you know, they take time and we help accelerate them, um, but that's just the reality of it. So I think keeping this experimentation mindset um, creating proof of concepts, t just testing new technology can really invigorate, I think, and, and inspire uh, everyone in our customers' environment uh, mm -hmm. to keep innovating and keep pushing kind of the boundaries of our banking experiences. Right. So how are you thinking about overcoming those challenges sort of specifically for you? Yeah. So I think one of the areas is also designing uh, really in partnership with, for example, regulatory bodies, mm -hmm. also the, you know, the, the compliance and legal teams within the bank. Often they're kind of used as like the final checkpoint, like, hey, can we launch this? Uh, 
in our app and they'll you know and then obviously there's a bunch of things to go through um we actually involve them really early on like when we just we, we haven't even written code yet we just have mm -hmm. a design prototype and we really get them involved in the process and get them to co-create these solutions with us mm -hmm. that's that's one of the key learnings that um i've had over the last few years um to create that partnership rather than that last checkpoint yeah and uh, bring them on on the journey right yeah yeah fascinating well thank you so much it's been thank a you so much for having me